Hello, everybody. Today, I've got just what the internet needs, another unboxing video. Let's dig in, shall we? Welcome to part three of my Build the Sky Guy Building Your Own Personal Observatory series. And today, we've got an unboxing. So here's what's going on. The observatory itself, the building part of it, is delayed because of the plastic shortage, although it looks like I'll be getting it within a month. Uh, so that's good. But in the meantime, it occurs to me that from looking at all of the assembly instructions, which look like IKEA instructions, there's no text anywhere, it's just pictures. So no English required. It's pretty much all just uh, 5 16 screws and washers and quarter inch screws and washers and nuts. And you put the whole thing together uh, based on the instructions. So it occurs to me that the hard part about getting this all together, especially as a remote observatory, is all the extra stuff, not the walls and the dome, but all the electronics, the cloud sensors, the rain sensors, the track to move the dome, the motors, the motor to open and close the shutter on the dome, all that stuff. That's really going to be the hard part. So I asked them if they wouldn't send me all of that stuff ahead of time so I could get the software pre-configured and make sure that it runs in my shooting software and that I can fire up a motor using the remote command through the internet, through the cell system to get something to turn on or turn off. And there's a lot to all of that to try and get it going. So I thought, well, hey, just send me all that stuff. Well, yesterday it all showed up. So uh, everything except for the pier. So anyway, so let's dig in. There's a lot of really good stuff here. So uh, right here, this is the track that goes around the outside of the dome. As you can see, there's, uh, you know, gear places for, uh, you know, gear to go in there. And uh, this is actually adhered to the outside of the dome using, get this, double-sided tape. Well, you know, that doesn't really seem like a good idea to me, but obviously uh, it's tried and true and it's what they recommend. So this better be some really sticky double-sided tape to hold this uh, all the way around the dome. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll reinforce it with something else. I don't know, but... Uh, you know, humidity being what it is, you just can't have this stuff falling off. But we'll see about that. So this is the track. You just double side tape it around it around the inside of the dome, and there you go. All right, what else do we have here? Well, let's look at, here's an easy one. This is the, what? Bubble. This is a mounting plate and a battery, a power supply for the shutter motor. It has a mode on the back for charging a particular kind of battery. And this is going, this bracket is going to adhere up right next to the shutter motor. And the shutter motor has its own battery that uh, is charged wirelessly because you couldn't have a wire on it because it has to go everywhere the dome goes. So this is going to charge it. And then so the dome, the dome motor has its own battery. They say that it's good for opening and closing the dome 10 times, which would be more than you would reasonably open and close the dome in a single night of observing. And so when the dome's closed, it's together and the charger is charging it. So that seems reasonable, tiny little thing there. I was trying to run the observatory strictly on 12 volt, but it looks like I'm gonna have to have at least one voltage inverter on a power strip to run some of these uh, little specialty items, power items. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Oh, bubble. Here's another easy one. Okay, here we have, this would be considered the upscale version of the rain sensor. 
So this gets mounted onto the outside of the observatory like that. And uh, you got a cable with one of these um, weatherproof sensor things. I think they call these an IVP6 or a 4. I'm just getting used to all that, but weatherproof connector there. And uh, I was reading up on this particular uh, rain sensor. Apparently, there's a bunch of light beams bouncing around here inside. And as long as the dome of this thing is not wet, the beams bounce around in a very predictable manner. But as soon as there's water of any significance on the dome here, that allows the light beams to escape. And then the sensor picks up an escaping light beam, which means there's water on the lens, which means that you've got some rain or at least some heavy dew. So um, then it sends a notice to some software, which then decides whether or not you are in a safe or unsafe condition. Is it safe? Well, we'll see. All right, so that is the, uh, that's the good rain sensor. I'm wondering if I have to drill holes in the observatory to mount all that stuff. And boy, that would require some precision drilling, which is not really my forte. All right, so what do we have here now? Hey, it's another power supply, next on brand. Well, standard power brick, figure eight connector. Okay, and this is for the rotation motor, which we'll find here in a minute, I guess. Okay, so another AC thing. Although it does say that this output is 12 volts, so maybe I don't need any of this, and I can just uh, go 12 volts straight from the batteries uh, for the observatory, which are 12 volts. So that remains to be seen. There's a question for customer service. They're going to be hearing a lot from me. Because when you put out documentation that has no English, there's lots of questions. All right, so put that in there. What else is in here? Okay, more dome rotation stuff. Ah, here is the... Well, let's... Oh, you can open it. Here is the highly vaulted double-sided tape. Double-bagged double-sided tape. One. Yep. It feels pretty sticky. It doesn't want to come out of the bag. Well, this better be some sticky-ass tape. That's all I gotta say. But we'll see if that holds it. You know, a couple of staples or an occasional screw would just make sure that it can't get started falling off there maybe and a couple of screws a magnet the magnet is interesting there's all kinds of discussion about where you should put the magnet but you put this magnet at a particular position uh, in the dome rotation at either south or north or wherever you want and um, this identifies that as the home location. There's a sensor on the dome that uh, comes up to the motor and says, okay, you're home. This is the park position. So the magnet has to go where you want it to go. And that's right, it's a USB cable. Unbelievable. And a couple of screws. All right, so that is all dome motor related and dome track related. All right, got this little gear. This is the thing that actually intersects with the track, right? So it'd be going in there like that and moving the dome by rotating the track. Okay, and here's the first substantial thing. All right, so here's the dome motor itself. It's got a standoff thing for the shutter. So you find a way to mount this like this, and at some point, 
this is the thing that goes turns the dome. Where does this go? Down here? Well, we'll figure that out. There's probably some pictures instructions. It doesn't look like that's going to fit. I thought for sure that would go up there. All right, nevertheless, that's the motor. It's pretty hefty. This thing weighs about seven pounds or so. Power supply input here. USB cable there. Manual direction switch for temporary depressed switch for both directions for moving the dome. But I'll be doing that by software. Here's the magnet sensor for the home position to go with the other magnet. All right, that seems fairly straight ahead, although. Ah, uh, here's some pier stuff. Okay, so um, I ordered the custom pier that comes with this. Uh, I wanted to keep all the accessories in the next dome family because at least in theory, they've been tested to work together with each other. The last thing I need to do is go off and spend some money on some rogue rain sensor only to find out that there's no decent software for it or something like that. So I'm, I'm really trying to make this as uh, uh, one-stop shopping as possible. So I, I bought the uh, pier for it. So it's a standard pier. It's about 90, 90 pounds. You screw it into the uh, foundation. And uh, we talked about that in the uh, cement video. But it does come with um, uh, a number of things. Let's see. It comes with just, this is the, the bag of screws uh, broke open in transit. So this is like a huge batch of screws and washers and stuff like that. And... Um, so then you have these two large plates. Oh, that was pleasant. Okay, so this plate here sits on top of the pier, like that. And then this plate sits on top of that, but stood off by these uh, the bolts that they give you. So the, the uh, this pier, or this plate, and this plate, I won't be holding these long, this plate and this plate are about this far apart on top of the pier. And so by adjusting the nuts on the bolts, you can adjust the height and everything of this so you can get it level, just in case your pier isn't 100% level to begin with. So then on top of that, you put on the adapter for whatever kind of mount you have. And that has probably has something to do with this. This goes on top of Maybe it goes down. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But anyway, this is the uh, adapter for the Losman D G11 mount. And it's got the, the screw holes in the right place. So you just drop that in there, turn it a little bit, clamp down those screws real good, then put this on top of your leveled plate. And you can use your leveling screws on the mount itself to make sure you have got that completely dialed in. So... It's kind of nice the way that all goes. We'll see how that fits. You know, perhaps maybe I have this backwards. Maybe this is the top plate. I'm just looking at the way this goes now. Yeah, yeah, that would be it. This is the top plate. That's the bottom plate. And because you you would need to be able to rotate this a little bit. So, so you can do that. Okay. Next up is the Air Titan series ventilation fan. You know, I, uh, I live in South Carolina. It's just hot as blazes here during the summer. And, uh, you know, the camera and everything is just gonna be out on the telescope all the time. So I'm thinking anything I can do to control temperature and maybe even humidity wouldn't be a bad thing. So even though it was expensive, I bought their uh, ventilation fan kit. So I guess you make a hole in the dome. You make a hole in the dome. It's got a nice little uh, software controller and power supply and this cable. And this will plug in somewhere and uh, there's a temperature sensor associated with it that will, um, all that stuff is packed away in here. I'm not going to get it out right now. But uh, the um, 
temperature sensor and uh, you can set this like a, it's a computerized thermostat and it senses temperature and uh, humidity and stuff like that. So you can get it to turn on under certain conditions. So I hope I don't have to cut a hole in the dome for that. Maybe I will. Again, that won't be something that's pretty. Okay, getting to the end of it. Let's see what else we have here. Seems like I'm missing a box. All right. Oh, here we go. This, uh, I'm not going to take these apart. These are the uh, track for the shutter. So here's the hardware for it. And this allows the shutter to smoothly slide. This is plastic. Allows the shutter to smoothly slide open. So we'll see about that. Put that over here with hardware. And now this is the most substantial piece of gear here. All right. And this is the motor for the shutter. It mounts like this. And this gear here goes into a track, which is embedded in those things there. We've got a couple of uh, open and close limit sensor magnets here. Again, another temporary depressed button, power button. Oh, it's already charged. How about that? Yeah, power button. Wow. Ha, 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 ha. Open, open, open. Well, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, these guys down here, this must have something to do with the charging. Get these close to the uh, power supply because this thing will roll open with the, with the dome shutter when it goes up. Okay, last thing. This is a cloud sensor. It's a little weird though. I mean, I gotta say, this looks like something I built in high school out of, you know, parts that you buy at Radio Shack. Uh, but it is a, apparently, a very decent cloud sensor. So you're supposed to mount it on the observatory, not flat, but a little bit tilted for water deal. Here's one of these uh, um, waterproof connections. And there's the cloud sensor right there. Now there's a rain sensor under here. I'm almost not really excited about pulling the tape off of there just yet because it's got to be super clean. But they've got a number of different uh, semi-sketchy ways of uh, dealing with the rain sensor. So I actually ends up having two rain sensors. The uh, advertisement for the Cloud Watcher AAG doesn't really talk much about the rain sensor. And... Um, so I thought it was just a really good cloud sensor. This is about $450. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't even have the name of the product on it, on it anywhere. I th think it looks a little bit cheesy, but apparently it works better than the cloud or pocket cloud watcher, which has its own designed box and everything. Uh, but nevertheless, um, mount it sideways on your dome and point it towards the direction in which the weather comes from. So if you get weather from the west, you have this kind of look into the west and you, you get an early warning. It basically, I think, just monitors sky brightness. And when clouds are there, they reflect more light. And, uh, you know, under cloudy conditions, you get a little bit more brightness. You set a threshold and it says, hey, I'm cloudy. And apparently the term that they use for this stuff is safe condition or unsafe condition. And so cloudy would be considered an unsafe condition. And so would rain, although rain is a lot more unsafe than cloudy. And you can then tell your uh, dome control, your observatory control software what to do. 
So I've got, I guess I've got redundant rain sensors. No big deal, I guess. And if you had to have redundant something, redundant rain center, sensors would probably be what you want. So, but they got a whole uh, PDF, uh, link to a PDF on here that tells you if you have sensor A or C, you don't need to calibrate. But if you have sensor B, here's three different methods to calibrate. And it involves hooking it up to your software and then putting a drop of water on it and then another drop of water and then another drop of water and noticing the values and then typing those into some box. And I just knew it was going to end up being a whole bunch of weird software stuff. So, you know, you have to program your, your dome's rotation motor home position. You have to deal with all the weather stuff. You have to get it mounted. You have to run the wires. You have to make sure you're not letting water in. You have to uh, get the dome shutter thing working really, really well. The way all of this stuff works is it um, talks to each other using a, a sort of a, a built-in Wi-Fi, like the uh, the dome shutter and the rain sensor, the other one, the good one. Uh, they actually communicate with each other so that you don't have to worry about your observatory control software being in there. If the rain sensor senses rain, it sends a signal to the shutter and the shutter closes and you don't have any delays or anything like that. Because like I said before in one of the other videos, rain is a disaster. So uh, that was good advice I got. So that's basically it. That's all the electronics and stuff that are going to go with, uh, with the... Um, with the observatory. The other part about it that uh, uh, will be electronic that will be in there will be, the, of course, the batteries, the input from the solar panel, and then the charge controller. And the output of the charge controller will send all of the uh, electricity to a, an eight output DC controller, which I should be able to turn on and off through the internet connected to the observatory using a cellular modem. So I still haven't been able to get that cellular modem. The first one I got was just absolute garbage. Don't buy anything from tactical. Yeah, they're terrible. And, um, you know, it's, it's typical overseas customer service. They get back to you whenever they feel like it and they ask you stupid questions like, do you have your SIM card in upside down? Uh, so anyway, um, Cradle Point ends up being the brand you need to get for this stuff because that's the stuff they put in first response vehicles like ambulances and fire department stuff. So I'm happy to have one of those, but it's taking a while. So that's basically it. Um, looking forward to uh, downloading all the software, getting this all together, seeing it run the scope and uh, loading it onto the shooting computer and seeing about all these wires. It's, my place is going to look like a real Rube Goldberg contraption here pretty soon. So. But it's all very exciting. So hopefully the dome will be here in a month. I've been looking at the instructions. Maybe take, you know, an afternoon to put the dome together and the walls. Uh, I still don't know how I'm going to fasten it to the concrete. But uh, again, another question for customer service. So thanks for watching. And Build a Sky Guy saying Carpe Noctum from Hilton Head, South Carolina.